Welcome to part 3 and the final part of this tutorial series where we're creating these Rocky Mountains in Blender. So in this part we're going to be doing all the materials and then we'll be doing the rendering and the compositing. And if you haven't seen part 1 and part 2 then definitely check that out with the tutorial playlist link in the description. And also in the description will be links to where you can purchase the project files if you'd like to do that on my Gumroad store and Patreon page and help support this channel. So let's start by creating the material for the rock. So I'm going to select the mountain here, and then I'm going to click right over here to go to the shading workspace. And I'll press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view. So I have the 3D viewport over here, and I'm going to hold down the Z button and go into the rendered view. And then right over here, I have the shader editor. So with the object selected, I can click on new to add a new material, and let's just call this mountain. Now I will also be using the node wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the node wrangler enabled, you can click here on edit and go down here to the preferences and then over there in the add-ons tab just search for node wrangler and check mark the node wrangler add-on and i'll show you how to use it in the video so with the node wrangler enabled we're going to be using the principal texture setup which is a feature of the node wrangler and it's going to automatically set up all the texture maps for us so with the principal texture selected i'm going to press Control shift t and this will bring up Blender's file browser and you can just locate the folder where you have the textures. So the first texture that I'm going to be adding is the rock 028 and this is a free texture from ambientcg.com, links in the description if you'd like to download it. And I mentioned all of the textures that I'm going to be using in part one of this tutorial series. So links in the description if you'd like to download this rock texture. And I downloaded the 4k JPEG version of this texture. So when you download the texture it's going to be a zip file and you can extract the zip file and then go into the folder and there's going to be a bunch of different things here but we just want to select the normal the roughness and the color so I'm going to select the color map then I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to select the normal GL and also the roughness so just those three maps and then I can click on principal texture setup and you can see that Blender is automatically going to set up all the texture maps for us. Now I'm going to be using an easy texturing method which places the texture very evenly on the objects and this way we won't have to use UV mapping. So what I'm going to do is hold down the control and shift key and then I'm going to select the base color to preview it. And you can see that it is totally gray and we can't actually see the texture. And this is because we haven't actually UV unwrapped the object. But we don't need to UV unwrap it because of the texturing method that I'm going to be using. So right here on the mapping, we want to use the object coordinates, so let's put the object into the vector. And already, now you can see the texture. But it is really stretched, so what I'm going to do is click on the flat here, and I'm going to change this to ball. And I'm going to change that projection for all the textures. So right here, click here on the projection. Let's change this to box. And also right here on this one, change the flat to a box. So this way you can now see that the texture is being evenly placed all over the object. And then just to make sure that there isn't any visible seams, right here on the blend value, I'm going to turn this to 0.2, and I'm going to do that for each one here. So the blend to 0.2, and right up here, the blend value to 0.2. And so this is going to blend between the textures where any seams are. And this is a really cool way for setting up textures, and it works really well for these kind of random organic kind of textures. It doesn't work very well for a texture which has a visible pattern, like maybe a wood texture, but for something like this, like rock or dirt, it works really well well. Now this texture is also way too big. I can see it tiling many times. So if I go here to the mapping, I can change the mapping scale and then this way the texture will be bigger. So what I'm going to do on the scale here is click and then drag down and then I can hold down the shift key and I can drag back and forth and this is going to change both values at the same time. So I can make this much smaller and I'm just going to make this like 0.6. You could also click, drag down and then let go and just type in 0.6 and then hit enter and that way it is much smaller. Now you're still able to see a little bit of tiling but we are going to be doing a few different things to make the texture look a bit different and we're also going to be mixing this texture texture with some other texture maps to make the tiling less visible and make it look more organic and interesting. Now if I press the zero on the numpad that is going to take me into the camera view. So in the camera view I'm going to go right back here and I'm going to control shift and select the principled shader and that way we can preview the principled shader. So already this is looking really cool and it's looking a lot like a mountain rock. But I do want to change the colors a bit because I don't like exactly how the colors are. I do want to change the rock colors a little bit. So I'm going to press shift A 
Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the hue saturation value node, and let's put the hue saturation value after the base color. And then I can control shift and select the hue saturation value to preview it. So the first thing that I want to do is turn the saturation down to zero. So I'm going to turn this all the way to zero, and that way it looks a bit more like rock because it is very gray. And then I also want to make this rock darker because right now it is a pretty light rock, but I want to make it much darker. So let's turn the value down to 0.5. So turn the value to 0.5 on the hue saturation value. If you control shift and select the hue saturation value, you can see it is much darker, but I actually really like how this looks because it makes it look more like a dark rock. And you can still definitely see the texture if I control shift and select the principled shader. Now I also want to make the creases of the mountains look darker. So to do this, I'm going to be using the pointiness value. So I'm going to press shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the geometry node. Let's put the geometry node up here on the top. And then I want to control shift and select the ge geometry node. And I'm going to continue to hold down the control and shift key and select the geometry node. And this is going to go down and display each value. And I want to go down here and preview the pointiness value. So the pointiness value is going to make the creases much darker, but then where the mesh is popping out, it's going to be lighter. Now it is pretty hard to see. It is kind of gray. So I want to make it more contrasty. So I can press shift A. Let's go to the search and I can search for a color ramp and we're going to put the color ramp after the pointiness value and make sure you control shift and select the color ramp to preview it. So I can now start to drag these values together and you can see it's much more contrasty. And I'm actually going to flip these values. So I'm going to put the white tab kind of about here and then I'll bring the black tab over to about there. Now you might be wondering why I'm flipping it because now you can see the creases actually look lighter, but I'm going to be mixing this in with the color and I'm going to be putting this color ramp into the factor. And so we do need it to be flipped so it'll work correctly. So I now want to mix the color ramp in with the base color. So to do that, I'll press shift A, let's go to the search, and I can search for the mix node, and let's drop the mix node right here. And then I want to use the color values, so let's click on float, and I can change this to color. And then the mix can just go right here after the hue saturation value. So we can use the mix node to mix two colors together, because we have A and B, and then the factor is going to blend between each color. So I'm going to take the color ramp and I'm going to take the color from the color ramp and put that into the factor. And the factor is determining where it's A and where it's B. And then let's also control shift and select the mix so that I can preview it. And then right here on B, I want to make this fully black. So click on this and we'll make B fully black. And now I can zoom in here and I actually want to click on this mix type and I'm going to change the mix type instead to darken so that it adds the dark values. So now if I zoom in here really closely, you can see that in the creases of the rock, it is looking very dark. And if you want to edit how strong it is, you can go back here to the color ramp and you can drag these values around. So if I drag the black tab farther back, it's going to be darker. If I drag the white tab farther back, it's going to be lighter and less visible. So I'm going to bring it to about there so that those creases are super dark, but then you can still see the rock in most areas. So I can now control shift and select the principled shader to preview the final thing. And I can go into the camera view and that is looking really nice. Now I want to add a lot more detail to the bump because I want the rock to to look more bumpy. So to do this, I'm going to press shift A, let's go to the search, and I can search for the noise texture. And let's bring the noise texture right down here. And then I want to use the object coordinates, so let's just take the mapping here, and let's put the vector into the vector of the noise texture. And then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And you can see here is the noise texture. So I'm now going to change some of the values on the noise texture. So I'm going to take the scale and I'm just going to turn that to 3 so that the noise is a bit smaller. But then I do want to make it very detailed, so let's turn the detail all the way to the max of 15. And then also I do want to give it a little bit more roughness, so let's turn the roughness to 0.6, so it's a bit more rough. So I now want to put this noise texture into the normal to give it some bump. Now we're already using a normal map, so to add in more normal data, I can press Shift A. Let's go to the search, and I can search for the bump node, and let's put the bump node after the normal map. So the normal can go through the normal, but now we have this other height value that we can add data into. So I can take the noise texture factor, and let's put that into the height of the bump. 
and then I can control shift and select the principal shader. And now you can see the rock is much more bumpy and noisy. Now it is quite a bit too strong, so I'm just going to turn the strength to like a 0.6, and that way it still is giving it a lot of noise, but it's not quite as bumpy. So there we go, that is looking a lot like mountain rock. But I now want to mix this rock with another texture to give it a little bit more green colors and brown colors and make it look like it's also made out of some moss and some dirt and make it look a bit more like a mountain. And also if we mix another texture in with this texture, then you won't be able to notice quite as much of the tiling of the texture. It is pretty hard to notice with all the details that we added, but it'll just make it even better. So what I'm going to do is select the principal shader and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and let's bring it up here. And we're now going to be adding in some new textures here. Let's also press Control S to save. So now with the principal texture selected, I'm going to press Control Shift T. And again, this will bring up Blender's file browser, and I'm going to be adding in this Rock Moss 001. So this is a free texture from 3D Textures. Links in the description if you'd like to download it. So once you download the texture, it'll give you a zip file, and you can just extract the zip file and go into the folder. So I'm going to select the base color, and then hold down the Control key, and select the Normal and the Roughness. And then I can click on Principal Texture Setup. Now you can see that it added in the normal and the roughness, but it didn't actually add in the base color. And that's because the texture was named base color instead of color, and so the Node Wrangler wasn't able to add it up correctly because the naming was different. So I'm just going to bring these nodes down and also bring this roughness down. I can also just select this frame right here and press X to delete it because we don't need it. And so I now want to add in the color map. So I can press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I can search for an image texture, and let's drop the image texture right up here. And then if I click and drag, bring the reroute over, I want to stick this up to the vector here, and then I want to put this color into the base color of the principled shader. So now I can just click on Open to open up this texture. So I'm going to go back into the same folder and I'm going to select the base color and click on open image. And then I can control shift and select the rock moss. So we have the base color and you can't actually see it and that's because of the mapping. So I want to do the same mapping method that I used down here. So what I can actually do is just select this mapping and press X to delete it. Also select this node X to delete it and the texture coordinate and press X to delete it because we already have this other mapping down here. So I'm just going to drag this mapping and bring it up and we're using the object coordinates so I can take the vector and I'm going to put the vector into this reroute right here and then that reroute will go into all the other textures. So then just like the other texturing method that we use down here I want to do the same thing. So on each one of these textures I'm going to click on the flat and let's change that to box right here flat to box and this last one down here flat to box and then on the blend value I'm going to change the blend value 2.2 on each one of the textures and the blend value will just make sure it blends any seams in the texture. So now I can control shift and select this principled shader and we can see what it's looking like. Now I don't really like how that texture looks right now it's much too green and there's a bit too much moss and it is a bit too bright so I want to change how the texture looks. So I'm going to press shift A let's go to the search and I'm first going to search for the RGB curves node and let's put the RGB curves after the base color. Now I want to click right here on the G for green and I actually want to give it a bit more green. So I can actually click and then drag this out and when I drag it up you can see it's just going to give it a bit more green. I don't want to add very much but just a little bit more. And I can also control shift and select the RGB curves and you can see what it's doing. So I just want to make it a bit more green. And then I also want to make it darker, so I'm going to press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the Hue Saturation Value node, and let's put the Hue Saturation Value after the RGB curves, but before the base color. And I can control Shift and select it to preview it. So I want to take the value here and I want to turn this way down to like a 0.2. And this way it's going to be much darker and I like how that looks a lot better. But you're still definitely able to see the texture. If I control shift and select the principal shader, you can still see the texture. It is just much darker. Now I also want to mix the same pointiness value with the geometry node into this texture. So what I'm going to do is go down here and I'm going to select this darkened node. And then I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. Let's Stick it here and I can drag it up and I want to stick it right here after the hue saturation value. 
And then I'm gonna go back down here and I wanna take this color ramp from the pointiness and I wanna take the color, I'm gonna bring out a wire and I'm gonna stick this into the factor of the darken. So I'm doing the same thing that I'm doing for this other texture here. I'm putting the color ramp into the factor here. So if I control shift and select the darken, now if I zoom in here, it is a little bit hard to see, but it is darker there in the cracks. So I can control shift and select the principled shader again. Now I also want to give this a lot more bump as well. So we're going to do the same thing that we did right down here with this noise texture. So what I'm going to do is select this bump node right here and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it up and I can bring it up and we're going to stick it after the normal map. So stick it right there. So now the normal is going through the normal. So we can now add another value into the height. So I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to take the same noise texture factor. I'm going to bring out a wire and I can drag up and this is going to bring the shader editor over and I'm going to keep pushing up until this bump node is in the viewport and I'm going to stick this into the height value. So basically we're taking this noise texture, we're taking the factor and putting it into the height value of this bump. So now you can see that this material is very detailed as well. So we now have this material down here and this material up here. And actually to organize this better, I'm gonna press B for the box select and I'm gonna drag a box around all of these nodes here. And then I can press Control J and that is gonna join them all together into a frame. And if I wanted to, I could also like drag these up just to organize them a bit better. And then right down here, I could do the same thing. So what I can do is actually just select this frame right here and press X to delete it. Then I can press B for the box select, just box select all these nodes and I can press Control J to join them together into a frame. And I can also kind of bring these down to organize it a bit better, something like that. So then right here we have the mapping and then right here we have the rock texture and then right here we have the mossy rock texture. And then these nodes in the center, that is the pointiness value. So I can Control Shift and select this principled shader and this principled shader. So you can see we have two different shaders now and I want to join them together. Together. So what I'm going to do is select the first principled shader, then I can hold down the shift key and select the second principled shader. So they're both selected. So I can now press control zero and control zero is going to join them together with a mix shader. So it's added a mix shader and it's plugged them both into the mix shader. Now the factor on the mix shader is going to determine how much of each shader it's using. So if I turn the factor to one, you can see it's just using the rock. But if I turn the factor to zero, it's just using the mossy rock. Now, I don't want to evenly blend between them. I want to add a noise texture into the factor so that some parts are one texture and then other parts are the other. So to do this, I'm just going to bring both of these nodes down so I have a bit more space. Then I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for another noise texture. And let's put the noise texture right here. And then we also already have this texture coordinate. So I'm going to go here to the object and I'm going to bring out a wire and I'm going to drag all the way over and then I want to stick that into the vector of the noise texture. And the object coordinates is going to place the texture on the object more evenly. And now I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And let's change some of the noise texture settings. So that is much too small. So I'm going to turn the scale just to one so that it is much bigger. And then let's also turn the detail all the way to 15. So it has much more detail. And also here on the roughness, I want to turn the roughness up to like a 0.7. So it's even more detailed. Now this is very gray and it's not very contrasty. So to make it more contrasty, I can press shift A. Let's go to the search and I can search for the color ramp and let's put the color ramp after the noise texture. And then I can drag these two values together and that's going to make it more contrasty. And I actually want to flip these values. So I'm going to bring the white to about here and the black over here. So now I can take the color and I can put the color from the color ramp into the factor. And then I can control shift and select the mix shader. So now the black and white values are going to determine where it's the first shader and where it's the second shader. And it is a little bit hard to tell where it's one shader and where it's another shader. So if you want to preview this a bit better, what you can do is actually take the base color here and you can take the color and you can drag this over. And just for now, you can temporarily stick it into this shader. And then if you go down here to this base color of the other rock, you can take the color and you can just stick that into this shader. So now you can actually see what the base color is looking like.
So now you can play around with this color ramp and you can choose how much you want. So I mostly want to use the other rock, so I'm actually going to drag this white tab out a bit, bring it a bit closer, and maybe bring this black one just back a little bit. So something like that is pretty good. So now that we're mixing two rock shaders together, it's much harder to notice any tiling and it looks much more random and organic and natural. So what I can do now is just take this principled shader and let's put the shader back into this shader and replace that. And then right here on this principled shader, let's put that into the bottom one to replace that. And you can see what that is looking like. And the mountain rock shader is finished. Now I want to put this shader on these other mountains. So what I can do is just click right here and drag this material and I can drop it onto the mountain. Or you can also just select the mountain and you can click on the drop down and just select the mountain material. And so this way they now all have the same mountain material. Let's press Control S to save and I can now go right back over here to the layout. And I can hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view to preview how that is looking. Now I want to add a little bit of haze and I want to add kind of like an atmosphere to make these mountains look like they're very far away. So I'm going to hold down the Z button and go back to solid view and I can press shift A and let's go here to mesh and I want to add a plane. And I'm going to navigate over here, I can press G to grab, bring this over, and then I can scale it up so it's much bigger. And I can also rotate it, and I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis. And then I can type in 90 and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. And I'm going to scale this up a bit more, and then I also want to scale it on the x-axis and just make that longer. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a little single layer, and that layer is going to have a little bit of haze. And then we're going to duplicate that layer and put it over a few more times along the scene to make it look like the atmosphere is getting more hazy and hazy. So I can press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view, and I just want to scale this plane up and I want to make sure that it covers everything that the camera can see. Now we also scaled this plane, so I'm going to press Control A and then I can apply the scale. So this is now the object's new default scale. And then with this object selected, I can press Shift D to duplicate. Let's put another one here. I can press zero on the numpad to go to the camera view and you can see the outline of it through the other object. So I want to scale this up a bit more and bring it over a little bit and just make it so it covers what the camera can see. And then I'm going to navigate over here to the side and I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate again. And let's put this last one way back here. And I can scale this up as well. So we'll make this even bigger, something like that. Press the zero to go to the camera view. And I wanna scale this up even more and bring it over something like that. And then I just want to hold down the shift key and select the other planes so they're all selected and I can press control A and I'm just going to apply the scale so it's now the object's new default scale. And I'm doing that so that the texture size is consistent because we are going to be adding a procedural noise texture to kind of make it look hazy. And so I want the scale to be consistent of the noise texture. So now let's create the material for the haze. So with one of these objects selected I can just click on the shading tab to go into the shade workspace and I can click on new here to add a new material and I can just call this like haze and then what I'm going to do is select this object here click on the drop down and I can select the haze and then click on this object here and click on the drop down and select the haze now these are giant plane objects so you can see that they're actually casting a shadow on the ground and I don't want them to cast a shadow so just select any of the plane objects and I want to click right over here to go to the object properties and I'm going to open up the visibility right here so underneath the visibility on the ray visibility, I want to turn off the shadow. And so now if you look right here where the mountain is, if I turn off the shadow, it's not going to cast a shadow on the mountain. So that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to select this object here and also turn off the shadow and then navigate over here and select this object here and turn off the shadow so it doesn't cast a shadow. So let's now make this smaller and I can make the shader editor a bit bigger and I'll press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view and we can now make the haze material. So I'm going to start by taking the base color and I'm going to make this very very slightly blue. It'll be mostly white but very slightly blue and then I want to make this transparent and so I want to mix it with a transparent shader so you can see through it. So I'm going to press shift A, let's go to the search, and I can search for the transparent shader. Let's put this right here, and then I want to mix these two shaders together. So you can hold down the shift key and make sure they're both selected, and then you can press control zero. And that is going to add this mix shader and it's going to mix them together. 
Now this factor is going to blend between only using the transparent or only using the principal. But I don't want to evenly blend between them. I want some parts to be a little bit more hazy and less hazy. So we're going to be adding a noise texture and we're going to put the noise texture into the factor to make the amount of transparency a little bit random in some different areas. But you can see it's definitely making it look more hazy and the mountains look farther away. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the noise texture and let's put the noise texture right up here. And then with the noise texture selected, I can also press Control T, and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I want to use the object coordinates, so let's just put the object into the vector of the mapping. And then I can Control Shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So let's change some of the settings. So I want to turn the scale to like 0.1 so that it is very big. But then I want to turn the detail all the way to the max of 15 so it's very detailed. And let's also turn the roughness here to like a 0.6 so it has a bit more roughness and a bit more detail. So I can now take the factor and I can put that into the factor of the mix shader. And then I can control shift and select the mix shader to preview it. Now it still is way too hazy, and so I want to change the colors of the noise texture to determine how hazy it is. So I'm going to press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the color ramp. And let's stick the color ramp in here in the wire after the noise texture. So if I click on this white tab here and click on the color, I can turn it down. And when I turn it down, it's going to be much more visible because it's going to use more of the transparent. So if I click on the white tab and click on the color, if I turn this down, it's going to be much more transparent. So I'm going to set this to kind of a mid gray color. And then also on this black tab right here, I'm going to click on this and click on the color. And I'm going to make this a little bit lighter. I still want it to be pretty hazy, but I will just turn it up a little bit. And then to make it a bit more contrasty, I'm also going to drag this out. And I'm going to bring it out a little bit more so that it's a little bit more contrasty. If I control shift and select the color ramp, you can now see what that's looking like. So I can control shift and select the mix shader. Now also here on the transparent, I want to take the color and I want to make this just very slightly yellow. So this way it's going to make the sky kind of look yellow, but then this base color here is kind of making the mountains look a bit blue. And also yellow and blue are natural colors, so it looks really good for the haze. All right, so we are almost ready to render the scene, but I do want to add a depth of field so that this mountain is in focus, but then the background is just slightly blurred. So I'm going to click right here to go back to the layout. And then in the layout, I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to go down here to Empty, and I'm going to add the plane axis empty. And we're going to place this empty object where we want the camera to focus. So I can press G to grab, move it up, and I can press the period on the numpad to zoom into it. And I want to bring it over, and I want to stick it right about here where the mountain is. And I can also scale it down and just stick it right here on the surface of the mountain. So we can now tell the camera to focus on that object, and that way that'll be the most in focus. So I can press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view, and I can click right up here to select the camera. Now right over here, if you click on the object data properties of the camera, I want to check mark the depth of field. And then if you click right here on the drop down, I want to select the empty object, or you can also click on the eyedropper and then select the empty. And I can hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view. So what I like to do when I'm adding the depth of field is I like to turn it way down so you can see it taking effect. And then I just like to click here on the arrow and turn it up and make it more and more subtle. And I found for this scene, a value of two is pretty good. So if you want to use the same value, I'm going to use a value of two. And so now if you zoom in here, you can see the background mountains are a little bit blurred, but then right here, the mountain, which is close up, is in lots of focus. All right, so I'm almost ready to render the scene, but if I go right here to the render properties on the sampling right here, I'm going to use a render samples of 100. So I'm going to press Control S to save the project, and then to render the image, I can click on render, and I can click on render image, or the shortcut key is F12. And the render finished. So I'm now just going to do a little bit of compositing to make the image look a bit nicer. So I'm going to click right over here to the compositing tab and I can click on use nodes to use the compositing nodes. I can also click and drag to make the timeline smaller. So the first thing that I want to do is add the denoise node just to denoise the image. So I'll press shift A 
let's go to the search and I can search for the denoise node and let's stick the denoise node in between the render layers and composite. And then on the accurate here, I can just change that to fast so it goes a bit faster. And then I can control shift and select the denoise and that's using the node wrangler add-on and it's gonna add a viewer node so you can see the backdrop in the background. And you can see that the image has been denoised, so it looks much nicer. Although if you wanted to keep the noise, you could actually do that. So if you select the denoise, you can press the M key and that's going to mute the node. And you can see adding that little bit of noise actually does maybe make it look a bit more realistic because that haze there is just slightly noisy. So you could turn off the denoise if you want to, if you like that little bit of noise. I'm going to press the M key to unmute the node and turn the denoise on. Now I also want to sharpen the image a little bit, so I'm going to press Shift A. Let's Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the filter and let's drop the filter here after the viewer and then I can also plug the compositing up to it. Now right now it's set to soften but I'm going to click here on the filter type and I'm going to change this to box sharpen and so this is going to sharpen the image and it looks pretty nice. Now that's way too strong so I found that a factor of 0.3 looks a little bit better. So it still is a bit sharper but it's not too sharp. Now I also want to give just a tiny little bit of lens distortion just because I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the lens distortion node and let's put the lens distortion in between the box sharpen and the viewer and then I can plug the image up to the compositing. And then you can also press the V key if you want to zoom the backdrop out and Alt V if you want to zoom the backdrop in. Now for the lens distortion, I do want it to be very subtle. So on the dispersion right here, I'm going to turn this to a 0 0.005, just a 0 0.005. But now if you look here on the edges, it is a little bit hard to see, but it is giving a tiny little bit of lens distortion. And I think that looks nicer. And I do actually kind of like how the image looks without the denoise. So if I click on the denoise node here, I can press the M key to mute it. And I actually kind of like that little bit of noise. It just kind of makes it look a bit more realistic. So now to save this final image, you can just select the viewer node, and with the viewer node selected, you can press the N key to open up the side panel, and then click right up here on node. And then to save the final compositing, you can click on the save this image button. And this will bring up Blender's file browser, and I'm just gonna save this as Rocky Mountain. And I'll just save it as a PNG image. Right here you can change the format. I'm gonna use PNG, and then I will click on save as image. So there we have it. There is the final image and this is going to wrap it up for this tutorial series. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and I hope you learned a lot from it. And if you'd like to purchase the finished tutorial files, then you can do that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description and that's also a great way to help support this channel. And also on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, you can get access to 3D models and assets, tutorial files and artwork project files and procedural materials and other Blender content on my Gumroad and Patreon. And if you'd like to help support the channel here on YouTube, you can also check out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on the join button next to the subscribe button. And you can also send a super thanks here on YouTube if you'd like to send me a little tip and help support this channel. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and thank you for watching.